Welcome to Backstage with Richard Ridge, and thank you for joining me and my very special guests. They are one of the entertainment industry's most beloved couples. They work on stage, screen, and TV, and you know them from the hit musical Wicked. You know her from such shows as The Boy From Oz, Nine to Five, The Pirate Queen, and from her Tony Award-winning star turn as Cher in The Cher Show. And you know him from Elf, Jersey Boys, Rent, and A Time to Kill, and from such TV shows as Madam Secretary, House of Cards, The Deuce, and The Leftovers, and on the big screen from Split. Mm -hmm. And now this coming Sunday afternoon, April 18th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, they will be doing their virtual concert with Seth Radetzky as part of his Seth Concert series that streams right here at Broadway World. It is so great to be catching up with them together. Please say hello to my dear friends, Stephanie J. Block and Sebastian Arcellus. Hello. Hi. I got to tell you, just hearing your voice is like wearing a comfy blanket. It blanket. feels so good. I we Preston and I talk about you two all the time. We <laughs> just, I'm thrilled that we have you together. Yes, we're together we're a happy. lot. We're <laughs> together a lot, Richie. <laughs> well, first of all, tell us where you are and how you are. Okay. Um, we decided to sell a lot of our belongings and our <laughs> life and put them all in a storage unit in New Jersey. We made a bold choice to um, lead with love for Vivian and we came to California to be near my family. And we found this extraordinary school that does everything outside. So her starting kindergarten and what we felt was important for her social growth and imitating and learning and apologizing and just building all the good human mm -hmm. stuff that we want for her. Um, they haven't missed one day of school because of COVID because everything is outside in this gorgeous climate and the precautions that they have taken. How are we doing? How are you doing today on Thursday, yeah. April 15th? Because it changes moment yeah, by a, moment. It's sort of a daily thing, right? I think we're all, uh, it's been, uh, adjustment after adjustment, recalibration after recalibration. Obviously, um, you know, those first few months in New York were quite difficult for so many. Um, and we, 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 as Steph said, we, we decided to sort of shift a little bit for now and, and, and try and emerge from this cocoon eventually having preserved at the very least, our daughter's joy, and yeah. um, and it's been an adjustment. I mean, it's I, a test. It's a test of the wills, professionally, yeah. personally. But every day we wake up and go, okay, we're grateful for one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Let's start our day, and we will just we're in constant communication. So you may ask us one question this entire interview because all we do is talk, yeah. talk, talk to each other. So it'll be good to sing on Sunday. No, I love this because I have spoken to so many people around the world. I mean, I had Cherry Jones in Switzerland. I've had everybody in London. And it, it depends if people are married or if they're living alone in New York in a, you know, in a stoned, you know, in a, in a concrete building or if you have kids. Everyone's going through something different and it's changed their lives this whole year because we've never been through anything like this before. No, we're, we're changed forever. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, we are changed forever. So we really uh, try to give each other a lot of grace. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we certainly come to odds at each other, but you know, there's nowhere else to go. So you have to forgive and forget real quick because where are you going <laughs> to stew? Um, and um, we're gonna learn a lot. We are learning a lot. So you know, how but, are you doing? Yeah. We love this. Like I said, Preston and I, we celebrate 43 years together this 43 June. 43 years. Congratulations. I know, right? Yeah, that's amazing. So, you know, I do this during the day. We shut stuff up at night. I've cooked every meal in this house except for, I think, three, which I love. You yeah. know, and it's like we watch a movie. We talk. I mean, it for us, it's it's been very weird because sometimes it seems like two years. Sometimes it seems like a year. Yeah. I re it's almost May. I mean, it, it oh, doesn't ever seem totally different when you look back at what this over a year has been like for all of us. Absolutely, every day, every day looks completely different. Yeah, and I think I mean I think you know people have spoken of this so much, but it's true the the you don't you hesitate to use the word opportunity to yeah. slow down, but the circumstances by which we are forced to slow down, even if our heart rates are speeding 
yeah. faster or, you know, yeah. or as I have been to a certain degree dealing with a great deal, of, you know, the opposite, the palpitations. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> like, it has been, you know, a, what I have discovered about the year for me, it's been in some regard, a slow evolution of my relationship to risk mm-hmm. and, and um, sort of loosening of one's sort of conceived, preconceived notions as to how things should go under a circumstance like this. And, um, and I think coming out here has been good for all of us for the time being, because we've been near Steph's family, who we she's been away with from for 20 years 20 now. years, yeah. Um, and Vivi's with similarly aged cousins that she can run pretty free with, you know, within certain confines. I hear it's beautiful in New York, but not to make you jealous. It's, you know, it's, oh, it's 74 degrees. We've been swimming yeah. in the pool the last three days. So that's there really is good. a freedom. And however you look at the weather, you go, wow, that's good for my spirit. That's good for my kid. And that's doubly then good for my spirit because of her joy. We also want to stay engaged with our community back home yeah. and not ever feel too far away. And uh, yeah, and 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 that that's important to us. So um, so we're grateful for this time. Yeah, yeah. No, because I talked to Stephanie before she did her solo concert with Sam. Yeah. And I think you were in Cape Cod at that time, right? At the Cape Cod home. Yeah. Gosh, we sound privileged. Oh my stars! No, but- no, I did no. Just no, it, it's not at all. It's just you have, to, you have to change the environment you're in. You know, you have a daughter. We talked about Vivian then. What's her concept of what's happening in the world? That's interesting. You know, she's like, in some regard, all you're, you're so concerned about her mental state, our children's yeah. mental state. And yet they're also quite malleable. So yeah. uh, it's not, you know, she'll put that mask on. And it's only now that she started to barking about it a little bit, maybe because she sees other kids starting to take them off. But, um, but, but she's tired of us. I can tell you that much. That may be you true. know, we'll play a card game I and she'll be. sit between us and she's like, out of nowhere, Richie, she'll say, like, I'm tired of sitting between you two. All I ever do, I'm just between you and you, and I can't take it anymore. Like this little teeny quivering six year old voice. We just yeah. had enough, yeah. enough of our attention, enough of our love, enough of us, you know, trying. Now, what's the uppercase letter A in the lower case? I'm spelling everything all yeah. day. This poor girl's like, stop spelling at me. But, you know, she does have a sense are. of humor, though. So she does find her way through things with, um, with levity. Yeah. yeah. And, and and I have to say, whereas she was developing certain anxieties towards yeah. the end of April last year, uh, that summer on the Cape where we laid down some roots uh, was freeing for her. And out here, she's really kind of thrived. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. I want to talk about talents. I mean, what are some of Vivian's talents now? And is, is, the, is the showbiz word been mentioned in your home? You know, she doesn't think we work at all. Yeah. She, she sees us putting ourselves on tape a lot. And so she'll mimic that, but she doesn't understand that we're trying to get a job, right? There are no jobs for mom and dad other than being with her and around her. Um, we think she's a Lynn manuel Miranda. She makes up lyrics. She rhymes so everything. Yeah. There will be a word that comes out of her and we'll say, now, was that a mistake or does she actually know that word in context? And we'll test her on that. And so her, her vocabulary is so beyond her age yeah. some things come out of her mouth where i say to her is that a, is that a song like do you know that is that did you learn that song yeah. on the radio do you hear that yeah. song? Like, and she's like no i just came up with it my it's best crazy. friend sings backup for taylor swift and i send her songs all the time going get this to taylor because i think this is her next number one hit right <laughs> Viva will be like i'm a kitty in a high heel shoe i'm a kitty in a high heel shoe i walk in the room this is from a five-year-old child saying yeah. this first of all it sounds a little you know uh, edgy but then i'll send it i'll have her do a voice memo i'll send it to my friend and be like you better have you know i want boombox to this i want <laughs> harmonies and i want this on the radio in the next you know year get taylor on this so we do believe she will make music throughout her entire life um but no does showbiz come into her vocabulary? no i mean she sees you know it's weird it's gonna be weird for her i'm like you know we, i gotta go up to the closet and record voiceover <laughs> she's like my dad goes in the closet it's just weird you know but we have outside you know we built a little yeah, uh raised 
fairy garden for yeah, her. Yeah, she's yeah. outside adventuring. And then her school is, it's almost like she's in Denmark. I mean, she wears magical. waders and, you know, uh, outdoor weather gear. They say there's no uh, uh, bad, bad weather. weather, just bad wardrobe choices. Yeah. I mean, so she comes home with treasures. She made, you know, took a stick and some string and was like, I made a bow and arrow. I mean, you yeah. know, she's, her imagination Ugh. is 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 thriving. Um, I joke about this, but I can't tell you how many hours I've been a magical talking baby burrito. This is real. This is what our days are like. Yeah. So showbiz, not so much. Magic and imaginative right. play. Oh yeah, we're acting all the time from every pore of her. Yeah. We're so I think one of the big positives of this is that you're there watching her grow, both of you, on a day-to-day -day basis where you normally might not be. Maybe one of you are or whatever. That's the nice thing, talking to all the stars that have kids. They're like, yeah. that's been, they live their lives through their kids now. They're like, oh my gosh, you know, yeah. you have that time of her. Her growth her. is really beautiful. Watching any human being mm -hmm. learn something and s how difficult it is at the start. And then you see the fluency of it and you're like, wow, that child just grasped, whether it's tying your shoe or learning a bike with, you know, to ride a bike without the training wheels or roller skating for the first time, all these things, you just see these incremental changes and then they're off and running. It's really, it's beautiful to see that growth. Yeah. Because you used to hear about those things. You might have been in a show and Sebastian might have been, oh, she tied her shoe today. And you're like, I wasn't there to see that or, you know, or vice versa. Now, And these are big things for parents. All right. We talked about the vaccines a little bit before we went on. I think we're all vaccinated, right? We are. We did the one and done. We did Johnson yeah. & Johnson. Yeah. Um, we feel really great about it. We are past the two week mark. We were one of those couples that with this allowance of time, we would wait, we'd go to the facility and we would just patiently wait in our car. And if a text message would come, then we would go or not go. So I guess on the fourth, fourth time around, we were lucky enough to be there. Yeah. And there were six of us waiting and the, the gentleman said, we only have four left. We're going by age. And it was first time in our life that we were like, we we're it. old enough. We made it. Suck it, you 30 year olds. You'll get it next week. No, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? We actually made it by yeah. age. And it felt, um, Sebastian was hilarious because he looked around. He's like, we will forever be bonded. No. With these I literally out, I, out loud, I said, I feel a kinship with all of you. And since crazy. they're not actors, they looked at us like we were crazy people, but we will forever remember yeah. what they looked like, what they were wearing, and who we sat with when we got that shot. I, uh, we were talking earlier, but uh, for the audience, the uh, vaccine was administered by the supermarket chain Safeway. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's it. It's the Safeway. Literally with tears in his eyes. Oh yeah, that Emotional. word means something. I never. We would pass the Safeway market. It never meant anything, and now it is. Safe the way. safe way we've yeah. been blessed yeah. by the safe way and it's true it felt that deep and important and life-changing and freedom and music like it the whole definition of that shot for us was great and deep and yeah. innovation i mean what they were able to do in the course of a yeah. year i don't I, I can't even conceive of that level of uh, smarts sci and scientific yeah. innovation yeah. Because yeah. we were talking, when Preston and I got our first shot, we sat in the chair together and we both actually got all teary-eyed. I mean, yeah. and you forget how much like you are carrying on your back leading up to this. That once you, we got that first shot, we're like, oh my gosh, I can move my shoulders. Yeah. Like, you know, like yeah. you had a massage or some emotional massage or whatever. It just It's so interesting. Yep. I slept that well, I think somewhere in yeah. November. And I slept that well early January, and I slept that well after the shot. That's mm. right. Yeah. Now I got to talk about self tapes with you too. Let's talk about the new world of like going in the closet and saying, you know, I have a light in there now, or whatever here's else. The, here's the thing: it's not the self tape; it's the slate. Oh, we can we can audition, you know, through you know, like nobody's like business. nobody's business. Yeah. But say our own name. No, and how tall Can't do we it. are and where we're from. I mean, Can't do it. I'll look at myself and be like, okay, I should take my hand in my pocket. Oh, what am I doing there? Where did that fourth chin come from? Okay, uh, let's do this again. So the slate at the end of every audition we have is really the countless hardest. videos. Like, you know, it's it's 
it's a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> but yeah, our homemade makeshift makeup happens in the master bathroom. We have to clear a shelf and it's pretty, it's pretty bland. It's just a slate gray. So we don't have one of the blue shades that can yeah. come, you know, behind us. We just use the cabinetry. Seb, I'm very lucky enough that he is really good at using the camera and using the light and doing whatever. Um, I have now learned that if you're on the other side feeding him lines, you can't speak like a normal voice person. You have to whisper like this or else you come off so over the top and so loud. There have been a couple of tapes that I thought as a reader, I was brilliant. Very, very good. And then his manager very will write good. back and be like, yeah, whoever is reading with you is so over the top, it's distracting. We need that person to pull back. I was like, I was getting an award-winning performance. What's happening here? So we have found that balance. Sadly for us, it has to happen after we put Vivian, Vivian to bed. So, you know, I start putting on the makeup at like 8.30 at night to start going at 9 p.m., we're able her, to wrap it up maybe 1030. Her agent Tim says that he he just looks forward to seeing what outfit she's going to come up with. I do bring out some good outfits. She, you can appreciate it's that. Full right? arm. <laughs> well, because you know, Preston Handles, Mark William, and James Kelly, yeah. and they're doing the same thing, but Mark has found a way. So sometimes when he doesn't have a reader, he records the other voice. Wow. That's how he does this. But when you when when he comes back, I'll let you know he does the other voice sometimes differently, lighter or whatever. And wow. then he, he connects the tapes together if there's no one to read with him. That's yeah, amazing. technically that's... I'm still not there. And then downloading the tapes and then putting them in a Dropbox oh. file and then making sure the files are a certain compression. And then, and then Four hours like, later, you're like, what? Yeah. If Thank I you. Didn't, if I didn't Thank have Seb, I think it would be a sort of no concert, no audition <laughs> mode because I just don't speak the language of technology. And I'm not getting any better. You would think in a year's time, I would... Much yeah. like Vivian tying her shoes, she'd get better. I'm not getting any better. <laughs> but going back to you saying the slates, they're the same thing. They'll do a four page, you know, audition where they have to show four four different emotions. Then they're like, my name is, oh, what's my name again? You know, yeah. don't make me don't make me say my name. Yep. Crazy. It's crazy. But I, I love that, you know, everyone has turned their home, like their bathroom, like you said, or their closet into something to make their magic. And you're like, I'm going in the closet. Everybody stay quiet for 40 minutes until I'm done. <laughs> Mama, daddy need a job. We need a job. <laughs> But then I've talked to people like Jeremy Jordan. It's like, Richard, I audition all the time by self tapes and I get nothing from them. Wow, you know? that's surprising to me because he is so yeah. you know, photogenic. We've gotten pretty good. You've gotten two opportunities. We weren't able to take them. Some voiceover work you've booked. Yep. And we've gotten to network or whatever that means. But yeah, I'm not on any sort of NBC or CBS series as of yet. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless it's just, this is live right oh, now. We're oh, on hey, TV hey, right hey, now. Hey, okay. Totally. Hire them. <laughs> you get two for one. That's right. Um, Listen, how has being parents change the way you look at your lives and your careers everything so completely 100 percent. and thank god it is a it is a 180 uh, really yeah. she is um she's our priority truly so the decisions that we have to make moving forward um not that she you know wears the crown in the house but yeah. our discussions will revolve around her and what is healthier and healthiest for her and mm -hmm. what criteria and can we make this work without um, it really being detrimental to her, her growth. There has been just this understanding now with this massive shift that um, what we once thought was security, that was an illusion. There, there, there is no security. And every, I know this sounds airy fairy, but every breath is a gift. Every day is yeah. a gift. Every moment with him and Vivian is a gift. And that needs to be the first question. How can we protect that gift and yet still flourish in what we are impassioned doing, which is music? But these conversations are going to be, I think, deeper and longer, and we're going to have to be just... more fluid. And I will say that I feel that the humanity, at least with the team, my team that I work with, the conversations are much more fluid. 
are much more understanding. What do you need? How can we get you there? What is it going to take to make this work, not only for the production team, but for your little family? And all, uh, those were few and far between before COVID, yeah. honestly. So I think it has really touched in, in, in people in many different ways. It has stretched us. It has expanded our thoughts. It has lessened our tolerance perhaps, but allowed us to reach into that realm of humanity more than just results, 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 results. Now, there's also paying the bills yeah. and that's a real thing. So, you know, I am grateful and happy to teach the online courses. Would I love to be in the same room as these fellow artists so that we can communicate in that way? Yes, but until that happens, I am so grateful for moments like these and Zoom classes and the concert on Sunday. And But we were listening to Celia Keenan-Bolger's new podcast, right? Sunday yeah. Pancakes. Amazing. And Danae, Danae Benton got on and she spoke to just making sure to sing and dance, even if it's 10 minutes a day, because that is the heartbeat that makes us tick. And whether there's somebody on the other end applauding you or handing you a paycheck, just to connect with that sort of musicality that lives within us, mm -hmm. you have to do it 10 minutes a day. And the joy and the, the battery that refills, just from doing that silly dance in the kitchen or singing the duet or in the mirror or whatever that looks like, you know, you kind of revert back being to that 13 or 14 year old girl who desperately wanted to be on Broadway. That's yeah. what we're doing now. And that's one way in which she certainly grounds us because it's it all day. She's humming along and, you know, we're dancing Vivian, around yes. the, uh, the house. Yep. I mean, so that does, and look, and we had it really, really good for a while where, you know, when Steph was working at Broadway and I was doing Madam Secretary in Brooklyn, like we were able to sort of juggle it all and yeah. still be present for 90% of her life, you know? Um, and, uh, but we, I look, I have a guilt complex to begin with. So the notion <laughs> of me being away, going to CVS, I feel like I'm gonna miss something, you know? And, yeah. and, and uh, so it, it's complicated to look into the future and say, what is this job gonna cost in some regard? So yes, we, we, we yearn, to be artistic and, and creative. actively searching and are actively searching, but at the same time, how is what? Am, what is that going to mean for if my we have to move to New Zealand separate? or yeah. Atlanta or Toronto? Because everything now means you know relocation. There are a lot yeah. of things that can be done from your living room, but then if you do book one of these gold mine jobs, right? That yeah. we're all saying, oh golly, is this right, right. for the family? And if so, what a beautiful gift this would be it means a full yeah. life change yeah and then you know she's six now so there, we're getting to that point where you gotta park it somewhere yeah, for a while. Cool. and yeah. when you do then any job could potentially be away and and that's just that's a tough that's a tough pill to swallow but but you know we're we're really i was gonna say blessed hashtag but we, are. we are really <laughs> lucky to be um in a position to to sort of even navigate these questions and yeah. hopefully yeah. the path will sort of lay itself out in a way that we can digest but you know the reality is who knows day to day the most important yeah. thing is we have each other and we have her and that's what matters yeah. and we figure it out from there now we did just pitch ourselves on your show and your phone yeah. rang so i just want to make sure that wasn't we, somebody yeah, we don't want to miss this opportunity have press has got that all <laughs> under control but unfortunately it was verizon <laughs> oh wow well, okay you never know someone may hear may, may see this somewhere else no because i've been living like cheyenne jackson did my show you know my boss rob diamond and his wife jennifer they just had a baby girl leia i just yes, know it's, yes. it's changed their whole life of being in the house and working from home and figuring out the business and figuring out broadway world they have her you know it just oh, makes such a difference I feel like you say the two of you at the end of the day when you're worrying about a job or something, you just turn to her and say, oh my God, let's do a little dance in the kitchen. And that's it makes exactly it right. better. That's exactly right. We'll figure out how to pay the mortgage later, but for yeah. now, yeah. it's 10 minutes of dance. You know, raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. This is what she's learning yeah. and I'm helping her learn. And then, you know, this goes without saying, but when you're actually doing the work, it of course deepens the work too. Oh so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, now we have to talk about this coming Sunday because the two oh, of you yeah. will be live together, right? We're together. 
with first Seth time. Kaczynski. Yep, first yeah. time together. This is like Steve and Edie. This is a big yeah. deal. I mean, this is no, <laughs> seriously with Seth Rudesky doing your virtual concert as yeah. part of his concert series that streams right here at Broadway World. How excited are the two of you to be performing together? We're, oh, I love it. I know, and I'm nervous. It's yeah, really I'm nervous. So I'm really nervous. Fun. There is a, what I've learned about me is that you know I'm a control freak. So anytime you have to release a verse and go, oh, you better know your stuff, or here we go, let's hit our harmonies, or you know what is the banter going to look like? I'm used to being, you know, and Seth part of his magic is he's so off the cuff. Yeah. You never know what he's going to say or say, no, 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 don't do that. Do something from Elf. And we're like, oh, oh the lyrics. Blah, blah, blah. I do not remember the so lyrics. So to have three moving parts in one yeah. concert is thrilling and a little, I'm, I feel a little off kilter, but that's what makes Plus it you're kind in, of fresh. And you're in your house and you've got yeah. the things in it. It's just, it's a whole different animal right but do like we singing? sing together is it fun yes we're you know that's what made us fall in love in the first yeah. place was you know hearing him sing watching the way he walked through life walk oh no oh, dancing I through I life danced through. well i did walk I through life I, walk, I didn't really <laughs> dance through life i walked that one but to but. know that it's what like theater and music yeah. is what started this relationship and theater and music has kept us going through a lot of these dark and yeah. sort of empty times to know that we can celebrate each other, celebrate our art and our craft and celebrate that with our community and with Seth. And it also, just feels like a real delicious drink of water. Do and you know there's something I mean? about when you're doing it with, literally the person in your life your 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 person it sort of becomes something else not just organically inherently because of our relationship and, and our connection but it kind of just is what it is you know you're just kind of you're together and you can just breathe life into it as 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 you do every day um i don't know if my point is, is it does because clear. there's oh, a, yeah. a let, for example, I know what he means, right? Our li our watchers and listeners may not. Bias his wife yes. and this person go. There you go. I know what that means. You so have a translator. I'm his translator. <laughs> there it is. Um, one little thing. I want to tell one little story about uh, Vivian and the the life that we were having in New York. So the other day, I was talking to her, and we were sending a package to a friend of ours in Manhattan, Kansas. Can I tell the story? You can. And um, and she was like, Manhattan, Kansas. And we were like, yeah, Manhattan, Kansas. Like, Can you remember another Manhattan? And she's like, of course. And I was like, where was that Manhattan? She's like, the city. And I was like, what city? And she said, mama's city. And I just wept. I mean, I just wept because in her frame of reference, in yeah. her mind's eye, New York City is my city. And that speaks so much that we're 3,000 miles away we but, would go every day that we would go into the city, we'd go to see her at the show or in the theater or backstage or to have lunch between shows. I mean, we were living in Jersey at the time, right? So it was like- But for me, that really, was a Valentine because it was oh. like my understanding and love of New York, my understanding and love of her and what she knew that to be was Mama City. Like we oh. work together. And so awesome. Awesome. we hope to bring a little bit of Mama City to the concert on Sunday. Okay, so without giving too much away, though, what are some of the songs or shows you're going to sing from? Can you tell your fans a little bit of what's going to happen on Sunday? Yeah, of course, there will be Bill Finn. Not the songs they might be expecting, but there will be some Bill mm -hmm. Finn. Um, Seb and I found this extraordinary song by Billy Joel, which we feel speaks to Mama and Daddy City a lot. There are duets that we've always wanted to sing together. Mm -hmm. There's one at the request um, of one of my fans and uh, a nurse, Devin said, I'd love you to do the move on that you did at your Lincoln Center, which is, yeah. it is a gender switch, but there's a, it's not just used as a gimmick or a device. There's a reason why we do it mm -hmm. that way. We're going to go back to that. Um, Am I singing a little Spanish, a little Spanish to honor uh, some of my family's heritage? Yep. Um, so it will be eclectic and I don't think it will be a whole lot of, uh, I don't want to use the word rehashing, but revisiting a lot of the favorites that have been sung over time and time and time again. It will definitely have a very fresh feel, um, still authentically us, but maybe a lot of unexpected, a lot and, of unexpected and tunes. It's evolved a little bit over time, and oh, right. I guess we should actually thank 
the audience for being gracious to us over the course of the last couple of months. We've had to cancel. Uh, it was supposed to be a Valentine concert, right? Yes. So there are some <laughs> ghosts and remnants of what we created with that narrative of love yeah. and partnership. And so, but there were some good tunes that we said, oh, who cares if it's April or June or February, yeah. these just work. But there will be some lovey-dovey <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's what we had created for the Valentine concert. But yeah. Seb is better and we're singing better than ever. It's always Valentine's Day. It's like Christmas is a big holiday in your house, isn't it? Oh, yeah. We just took down Easter. Here's the thing. If I can celebrate anything with a theme and decorations, I'm in. So don't it tell me it's national whatever day, French toast day. I will be wearing French toast slippers and Vivi will have French toast for breakfast. Yeah. I love a good theme and I love decorations. So it's kind of as soon as one holiday comes out, another one's coming in and we're building a celebration for just, you know, being alive, I guess. Oh, no, I because I knew that about both of you. I said I knew that Christmas was a big deal in your homes. I mean, Megan Hilty, I think it's Christmas every day oh, in her home. Yes. Your mugs. Oh, my gosh. We love Ryan and his mugs. Oh, yeah. That, that family and our family, we understand each other. It, it, totally. Awesome. Now, we don't leave a Christmas tree up year round and they do that and decorate the tree for every holiday, which I find to be so divine and so yeah. me again. I just love that. Now, which part of your home have you turned into your stage for Sunday? Ah, uh, that's that's interesting. The fireplace is really pretty. But there's also this beautiful piece of art from Uruguay where Sebastian and his yeah. father side of the family are from that I think we're going to use that as a backdrop. It's it's abstract, but it's got spring colors. It kind of it kind of gives a nice proscenium to what we're presenting on Sunday. So that would be Let's see, the entryway, we have to move the hall tree with all our, you know, coats and purses and muddy boots. We got to move that to the side and use that piece of art as kind of our backdrop. So there you go. <laughs> so it's Saturday, sort of your like, we'll run a dry run. Yeah, for sure. Fashion set up the lights. Let's see, you know, it's so funny. At least you have each other to do this because, you know, when you're doing these by yourself, it's like, oh my gosh. I'm the performer, I'm the lighting designer, I'm the sound designer. But yeah. Seth's team, I have to say, has done such a beautiful job of whatever kit he sends you, whatever, and the stuff you have to download. That's no, right. And let's, and let's be honest. You know, I can handle some of the tech side of it, but I can't keep up with her and Seth. They're so dang sharp. It's like, it's like a contest of wits. So why do you want to give a shout out to David Katz, who runs a lot of the technical yeah, aspects. So we're meeting with him tomorrow at 9 a.m. our time to get all that set up. We'll test the <clears> voice <throat> in some of the songs at that moment. Saturday, we will run the show in its entirety. Sunday, we know there's an opportunity for fans to maybe peek in on a sound check. And we're not quite sure. We're not quite sure if we're on board with that yet. So thank you, everybody, for your patience and being fluid. Right. That's the word of the pandemic being fluid because for us it will be eight nine o'clock in the morning and we're not ready to maybe be spied on at that hour oh because i was wondering i said oh they haven't officially announced their sound check so i said but then i realized you were out there and i'm like oh my gosh they have to get up at like when the sun comes up That's and then rough. Yeah, that's correct. Grace. And we know everybody is delightful. And if they're showing up, they're fans anyway. But there is just a different understanding where you're like, we may just need to run this for us. You know what I mean? And have that freedom to just still have toothpaste in our mouths and sipping a cup of coffee. So thank you all for just being on board and not knowing quite yet if we're going to invite you into the entryway with our muddy boots just yet. Not just yet. Okay, so stay on the lookout for that because it may be 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, but it's like sunrise out where they are now. That's right. That's the roosters right. will be crowing. They're literally, you know. Literally. Now, we do have turkeys in the backyard that are just like wild turkeys. So you might hear And we some... can't control them. So out of nowhere, yeah. you'll hear the yeah. we'll be in the middle of a song. So just know that isn't him or I. It's truly a, a, a flock of, is that what you call a Flock a of flock turkeys? or a, uh, a, I heard, I, I looked this up, a raffle, a, a rafter, a rafter. A raft a flock of or a rafter, I looked it up. I have too much time on my hands. <laughs> no, I love that because Preston's mom had them in her backyard and we could see them from the kitchen window. And I used to watch them grow from like this big into the something out of like Jurassic Park. That's and I was like, it's scary when they get really big, right? Yeah, yeah. We saw big. them at our next door neighbor's house. They were climbing, they were on the roof. 
walking just on walking the roof. Yeah, the roof. we're in the wild, wild west out here. Yeah. It's so wild. Now, will Vivian maybe make an appearance at this concert? Like, who's you taking know, care of her during all of this? Nana and Papa will be taking care of her. We tried to break her on the last song of my concert yeah. in August. Yeah. And that little girl was so was hamming it she up was and you know, making fun of me and yeah. looking at the camera that was like, no, no concert for you this time. <laughs> we could be mid concert in the other room. She'd be like, come play with me. Yeah, that's, that's true too. So she'll have a grand time probably watching us um, at Nana and Papa's. And again, my parents are about, they're less than two miles yeah. away from here. So that help and that sort of that's family great. infrastructure has just been tremendous to us. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, we have to go back. You mentioned Wicked, where you both met. I mean, there are life-changing experiences in all of our lives. And I know that Wicked was probably the biggest for both of you. Yeah. How did the showmance begin? Who was cast first? Who looked into each other's eyes and said, woo? <laughs> I, I was cast first. I was cast first. I was probably in, let's see, we started rehearsing in January of that year. And this was December. So I had already been, right? Does that seem right? Was it, it was December. Yeah. When I met you. But. I feel like we started the first national tour rehearsals you had been a year. either January or February. So I was in month 10 or 11 yeah. of my tour. And when he was introduced, so I saw his name on a call sheet. Yeah. Derek Williams was leaving because his wife was having a baby. So he wanted to, you know, leave to be the, the, the daddy there. And that uh, paternity time off brought in this gentleman and I saw his name. And of course I pronounced his last name incorrectly and thought, Everyone Oh, does. I wonder what he looks like. And then I saw him, I was like, Oh, this surfer dude, where, what is he about? I met him at after half hour call yeah. and anybody who knows me, my door is wide open for an hour and a half before the show half hour rolls around and I start getting into business. Right? So at the knock of the door was company manager and this one, and I've got my green leotard on, I'm painting my nails green. I'm about to be painted and I meet him. I mean, I think I was kind enough, but I was business. Uh, good to meet you. Welcome on board. It's great to put a face to a name. I got to go. There's no time get for trees or, you know, chit chatting. I got to get ready. Um, and that was my impression. Then I think he saw no, the show no, 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 no. and then I saw him in an elevator and he said, you're really marvelous. He's and something about my pitch. If I remember correctly. He, yeah. He said, you like your pitch is just always right, right straight through the middle of the note. And I was like, well, thank you. Thank you so much. It's a weird compliment. His story. <laughs> As opposed to you're pretty, but in show business, that's a big compliment. Your pitch is perfect. I'm right in the middle of the note. This Richie. one was all business. I was all business. It got to be maybe the day before yeah. we put in or something. And I was like, look, <clears throat> I went to stage management and musical director and I said, please, can we just like, can I just like be in a room with her? And can we just run as long as your mind once yeah. we just, I, I don't so, want to ask too much of her. I know I she's working so her tail tired. off. I was so tired. I don't want to work. I don't want to, I don't want to bother. I don't Can we just do it once? Let me do it. Um, anyway, but we became fast friends. Uh, and blah, 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 blah. bottom line is I, two weeks in, I was, yeah. I was sort of thrown off my axis. I was on tilt as the young people. Say. <laughs> and I don't, do they, does anyone <laughs> kids say? They're gonna say it now. I was on tilt. Anyway, and uh, and I I I I was just I was beside myself, and for and so I just sort of slowly chipped away. Uh, he did because I need to preface this. I was in a relationship with somebody, a serious yeah. relationship, going on total ten and a half years. So that's not anything to take lightly. Now. We were on Rocky Roads. I was living in New York. He was living in LA. I was on tour. There was a lot to work through and work she past. Time and and yeah. I, needed, I needed time. I needed to step away from the tour. I needed therapy. But did I look at him and say, this man is unbelievable. The way his, inter his integrity, his, um, the way he handles his his life business, his family life, the way he shows up to work, the way he sets a tone in a room, the way his buns look in those white pants, yeah. all of the above, right? Now but she looks I, at me and says, this man is ridiculous. The way he ridiculous. handles his life, the way he handles his family. The way 
But I couldn't allow myself to fall in love with him until after I left the tour, did a little therapy. and oh, yeah. But he kept persisting. The phone calls kept coming. He kept showing up in the city to ask for- Just made up reasons. He did, he made up reasons. I need to check in on my apartment. I have a doctor's appointment. No, I, I have a, you know, a general audition with so-and-so at casting. No generals. But <laughs> so we would go out to dinner and slowly but surely yeah. that, uh, that respect, that admiration, yeah. um, even the love then became trust and surrendering to and saying, you're my person. Yeah. It was undeniable. Well, your best friends, that's what we were. I mean, you, your, your best friends first and everything else comes out of that, right? Right. That's okay. right. Yep. I love that. I love that story. But, you know, I want to go back to growing up for both of you because mm. everybody gets that bug at some point. I want to ask you both where your love for the theater began. Stephanie, how did Annie Get Your Gun play into that? And Sebastian, how did Horton Here's a Who play in that for you? You did your research. Oh, you know me. I know you forever, oh you two. Gosh. Okay, so I yeah. was I was an old soul and a big voice and a teeny little body. So at seven years old, when I started singing, people referred to me as the little Ethel Merman. I didn't know who that was, but I wanted to make sure I did. And that introduced me to MGM, right? All of the yeah. big MGM musicals. Yeah. And I just was devouring all of those musicals at seven, eight years old. By 11 years old, I started to do talent shows, community theater, and Fullerton Civic Light Opera was like the beacon theater for our area because they would have like two or three equity contracts and these huge casts and a full orchestra. So at 11, I auditioned for Fullerton Civic Light Opera's production of Annie, where I found out after a rigorous three days of auditioning with 200 girls that it was already precast. <gasps> Excuse me. But then the next season, they were doing Annie Get Your Gun. And I thought, well, doesn't she have like three or four sisters? I have to, I, I mean, I have to get something. And I got townsperson number seven. And my line was, who's a coming? And it was Colonel Buffalo Bill, you know? And so I would say that line around the house with every intonation, with every emotion and find the best way to deliver that line. And my parents kind of knew at that point, this is not a bug that no. she's, she's full bore. This girl is out of control musical theater. What about you? I mean, I never did anything professional until after college. Um, but in the third grade, yes, I, I played the third monkey in Horton Hears a Who. Uh, that picture hung on our refrigerator I for a very a long time. I do have a picture somewhere. And it's so sweet. Yeah, I'm wearing, you know. Chocolate covered pantyhose for his little monkey legs. Yeah. And then. And then, you know, it's funny, in sixth grade, I had this amazing teacher. His name was John Cosentino. God rest him. But uh, he sort of brought this out of me. In sixth grade, we were doing a production of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. And we did the way we auditioned for the parts was we all would step in front of everybody and just sing, you know, uh, uh, there's no team like the best team, which is our team right here. And we will show you whatever the song is. And the guys were going, the girls were singing, and then the guys were going, the guys were all singing it low, like in their lower voice. I was a soprano. No. I mean, at that time, and but because he's to, still wearing the chocolate pantyhose, in order, <laughs> to, you know, in order to fit in and kind of just, I was kind of nervous about it. I just sort of sang it here and didn't do much with it. And as soon as I was done, I was like, "That was not you. Like you didn't, you didn't step forward in the way that you could have." And I went to Mr. Cosentino um, at the break. We had lunch. We were coming back to do more, and I said, "Please give me another chance." I mean, I was already this guy, right? Yeah. Please give me another chance. Like, I won't disappoint you, please. I, I, I let peer pressure, whatever it is, like, just give me another shot. And the next time I did it in full soprano, and everyone was like, what the <laughs> Anyway. But that's who Sebastian Play is. Charlie Brown. When I have, I have my, you know, my repertoire, my book of music, and I have made sure that I printed a lot of my audition songs on the back of letters that he's written oh. to stock theaters that are uh, like, dear yeah. Mr. So-and-so oh. artistic director, I feel that I would be right for your summer season because, uh. and the the generosity of spirit, his earnestness, his, his 
desperate want to scared be. them all away but it was so beautiful and richie i still have my music printed on those letters because it reminds me yeah. of how badly we all wanted it yeah. and want these opportunities so to never take it for granted or you know be over it um we can always make it a better space we can always make it a better uh environment and um we do hope that when Broadway comes back, it will be a newer, better Broadway. Uh, but those letters for me are a reminder of why we started. And I always have to go back. When Vivi is dancing in the kitchen, it's a reminder of why we started. And that music, you know, just the 10 minutes of, of, of reigniting that excitement of music and dance and joy, it's been a salve for it's us. It's a heartbeat. Yeah. It takes you back to when you did that line, who's a coming over and over and over That's in your kitchen. Right. Who's a coming? Who's a coming? Who's a coming? I, I can do it 30 different times oh. for you. <laughs> so Sebastian, how did you go from becoming a political science major to show business? You know, I don't know. <laughs> yes, you do. It, 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 it was, I always did, I always did theater, always sang. Yeah. But I went to fairly small schools over the course of my you know, educational time and yeah. um, educational time. Anyway, You're and so smart, honey. So sometimes, it was, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> no, it was just by nature of the fact that there were three of us that could sing that would be in part of the, part of the shows. Of course, they'd ignited a passion in me. So I was always doing theater in high school and college. Um, but it just sort of evolved. My, my, my interests sort of evolved. My, my passion for it, it became more than a hobby. It was it was really what well, was driving were, my studies by the end of You were studying what? And then you started I was studying, to look at the personality. Uh, yeah, I, was, I, I think, I, Rich, I think we talked about this before, but I was studying international relations. And then that became yeah. uh, economics and politics in Latin America, uh, where I had a sort of a vested interest based on my sort of family history, which then became sort of political personalities and rebels and revolutionaries in Latin America. And before you knew it, I was studying you know, these personalities and it was psychology and it was, all of that was mirrored by doing shows at the same time. Anyway, by the end of it, I mean, I went to Williams College, which was sort of a, an immersion in, in liberal arts. And for those yeah. that know, you know, Sondheim, um, Bill Finn, this is quite an institution that brings forward very unique artistic it was a, and a very special voices. It was a very special experience in that, you know, they sort of wash you with, everything, literature, art, art history. And it was impossible to ignore that that was moving me more than economics or right. uh, being a lawyer, yeah. uh, which I don't begrudge. It just wasn't for me. Yep. And so then but I came to play a lawyer. You played a lawyer, which is great. And I'm sure it well, helped that you did this all because of that. It's funny. I mean, ultimately you find your way to, to what's authentic to you. And it's it's always sort of struck me that I ended up in two political shows and that, um, and I do, I, I think I credit, I think David Fincher, who's so, so, is one of the smartest people I've ever met. Um, I think he can read some, you know, authenticity yeah. better than anyone. And, and I think he maybe read something in me that was like, he belongs in a newsroom yeah. because yeah. I very well might, yeah. you know, at some point in my life. So, um, or thought that I could have been. So uh, it all kind of sort of evolved, but I, I was pounding the pavement just like everybody and not coming from a conservatory and not coming with like a group of friends that were, you know, necessarily um, on the same path. So I had to find my way. Um, but many uh, theaters, or I should say rooms above bars that we made into theaters or basements below churches that were theaters um, sort of paved the path towards me feeling like there was no way to deny it. And, you know, that's beautiful. And I'm glad you did it on your own, not outside of a conservatory, because everybody sort of thinks, oh, you know, casting directors all go to their yearly show. So many people can't afford those kind of, you know, mm -hmm. kind of colleges to go to. So I love to hear the stories of the people who like, I just came to New York. And like you said, you called artistic directors or wrote them letters and said this. Everybody finds your own way into something. That's what I find fascinating about everybody. I always say what Cheetah always says, stay in your own lane and find your own path. Because just because so and so did it one way. Doesn't mean you can't do it another way. True, and I mean Steph came. I think when yeah. she when she came second time to New York, she came so yeah. like just 
she hit the ground running and she was ready. I have to admit, I was not. I mean, you know, I don't even know that I sang with vibrato until but I was again, 22 years old. But again, you don't compare old. it. Comparison yeah. will yeah. kill you. And I, you know, I cut my teeth a little bit, maybe, maybe in the wrong rooms, you know, but, but I also, I, I learned. I, I learned and I worked at it and I went from green to a little less green to not so green to now old. But you know, it's it's all it's all part of the process. You know, everyone has, like you said, their path. Yeah. But you know, you both have these incredible careers. I mean, we only have like ten minutes left because I could talk to you forever just That's going true. about the same thing. You know, but it's just like you were the two of you were known for musicals, but then you both got to do incredible plays in New York. I mean, mm -hmm. Stephanie, you got to do, by the way, meet Vera Stark. I mean, you play that incredible movie star. And Sebastian, you did a time to kill. Yeah. What did those two experiences mean to the both of you? Um, I I was nervous in the sense that my meat and potatoes, I always was told, was my singing voice, right? So I thought, oh, good grief. I'm not going to be able to play on that. However, again, talk about authenticity. My character was very much, you know, of the old school, 1940s, slightly heightened. And because of my love for the MGM yep. um, franchise, I could tap into that and know what that rhythm was and language was. To be in a room with Lynn knowledge to create language to make a narrative that that I felt it changed a conversation even back then um, I, I played an octoroon right so where my grandmother would have been an African American woman and I am working under the guise of not having black in my blood and I'm getting all the parts while Sana Lathan who is Vera Stark and my cousin is having to uh, far more talented than I tre tread the way as being my maid and my assistant and all of a sudden the Truth comes out, and in the 60s, Sanaa, who's playing Vera Stark, is now the headliner and the star, yeah. and that whole discussion of race. So to know that that story needed to be shared and carried without breaking into song, which is my freedom and the way that I always would choose to express myself, but that sort of perimeter and script, I found great freedom. I found um, so much energy in and it was completely worthwhile and it was like a big thank you thank you for trusting me with these words on the page that then an orchestra doesn't have to come in and necessarily take the story somewhere that we can trust these words mm -hmm. and trust this story and know that it is still going to be as impactful whether there's an underscore or not so that was really a moment where i felt like an artiste working at Lincoln Center was one of those, I feel like an artiste mm. doing a play in New York as a musical theater artist feels like a badge of, all right, all right, New York, you and That's, me, let's do this. Yeah, absolutely. You were phenomenal in that. Just oh, you're so lovely to say it. Oh, Thank I love you. that. Though. And it's a bunch of you with Time to Kill. And yeah, well, I think part of what I was listening to you speak and and yeah. there's still, it's Still a musicality, right? It's the words are still yeah. a form of music. And I remember a specific conversation that I had with our director um, about uh, a time to kill, where there was this big final speech that I had in the courtroom, and about halfway through, he wanted to underscore, start like a soft underscore, and I was like, "Let me have it. Let me just have it. Let me like I think I can. I don't think I need it. Let me hold on to it. I mean, I didn't win the argument, but the bottom line, is, <laughs> um, but it did feel like you know, it felt like a real moment in life where you are singing without music. Trusting the language, yeah. yeah. And yeah. and I, you know, the opportunity to work with, at, you know, you still have your insecurities, right? I mean, um, we would laugh. I remember I had this, uh, we were doing it out of town in, uh, with Brennan Brown was in Patrick Page's role that he ended up doing on Broadway. Uh, and, and Brennan, is so funny, would sort of laugh at me and say, I'm doing, you know, uh, this, big play with the uh, elf, Buddy the Elf. <laughs> and I said, listen, it's 1015. By now we would have, if you were in a musical, we would have run through the opening number five times. You'd be sweating from head to toe, trust me. You're doing half your job. Um, but anyway, the opportunity to uh, to work with some of the greatest classical actors at the oh, stage, yeah. John Douglas Thompson, Patrick yeah. Page, Tanya Pinkins. I mean, it was, 
it was a, a real blessing. I wish the show could have done better. I think, you know, um, it, it didn't, uh, but, uh, but it was still an extraordinary learning experience. And, you know, I will say that uh, John Grisham's next uh, main character in this following book was named Sebastian. I'm just going to claim it, whether it's true or not. If there's any sort of like <laughs> connection, I don't know, but I'm going to go ahead and own that. I want to piggyback on something you said, though, because we went and saw Joe Mantello in A Normal Heart, oh, God. and it was just gut wrenching, and we were drenched with tears. And we went backstage, and um, we looked at Joe, and I said, "How do you do this? How do you go through this em uh, emotional journey eight times a week?" He's like. Well, it ain't a musical <laughs> and you can take that however you want, to, right? Yeah, right. The, the emotional journey is such, but then there is the physical and the energy that goes into a musical that if you talk to any artist, they might say one day it's that workload and that discipline is so difficult or this workload and yeah. this discipline is so difficult. But again, comparison will kill in this art form. Mm -hmm. So you got to yeah. let them be their two own separate entities. Yeah. Because Matthew Morrison told me when he did his first play at Roundabout, he was like, oh, Richard, it's so different. I don't have to warm up my voice. I can use my different emotions without having to sing them. I can, yes. you know, he said it's so different. It's just as hard, but it's just different. It is. And I will say, I never had to miss, a, I never missed a performance of Vera yeah. Stark because of vocal fatigue or a pulled hamstring or yeah. whatever the case may be. Yeah. You know, there's so much more. I mean, Sebastian, House of Cards. I mean, it must have been so interesting to become a part of a show like that, where all of a sudden, anywhere you go, people are like, oh, he's that guy. Mm -hmm. It was, I, I, I can't, I don't think I've ever really been able to put into words what being a part of that was. Um, uh, working with those creators, with, that, with those actors, walking onto the set uh, and feeling like I was walking onto the set of All the President's Men, which to me is... yeah. It's as good as it gets. Uh, you were gonna. I could tell. Well, you were I'm say laughing something. because Richie, I'm the big jerk that that literally we sat down and I said, <laughs> "Is it worth it, Seb? I mean, you're gonna be out of town. It's not even on like cable. It's it's on streaming it's on an internet uh, streaming show? and because it was the first one, right? So yeah. we didn't know what that was. And I was like, so you're really gonna step aside and go away to film this for nine months? What? And he's like, look, it's Fincher. It's this role. It's the script. It's it, the whole package. I was like, okay, I just feel like I don't know if it's worth it. What am I talking? What is wrong with and, me? And it felt like theater in a way, I have to tell you. Because oh, yeah. David, of course, is, you know, sort of, it's well documented that he likes, you know, to work through a lot of takes. And, and part of that is, you know, is, he just knows what he wants. And he... Uh, and I chose to trust, of course chose, I mean, to trust that process because it felt like theater. We were rehearsing, we were getting closer to it. We were continuing. And he says, why bring, you know, all of these elements together and then not give the actors time to figure it out with them. And, um, so in some regard, it felt like theater. Also Bo Willeman who wrote it, you know, had written oh, yeah. back and forth and, uh, I mean, so it was an extraordinary bridge. It was a huge leap because I had hardly done any TV before that. Um, but it was a, it felt like a natural bridge from what we had been working on. You know, if I stop and actually let myself be in the moment, I was like, I, I, I'm more prepared for this than I think I am. Mm -hmm. um, but, but as a, as a lesson, as a, as a moment to learn, it was, it was uh, unparalleled. I, I can't yeah. put it into words. And they do look, we, we do walk around and people are like, how do, even in the mask, Richie, how, how do I know you? Do, yeah, do I know I you? Went to college or, with them or something. Yeah, well, but there is still a recognition so many years later going, I'm not quite sure how I know you, but yeah. it, was it my cousin's wedding? Did we go to college together? And the, it'll click at some point. You shall yeah. have yeah, well, right. like I said, we are out of time. I wanted to talk no. about so much more with all of you. You both work with so many incredible people. You've both given us so many incredible performances on stage, on television, on film, both of you. I mean, I mean, right. Steph, you made your Broadway debut with you, Jackman. I mean, you know, you got to play Cher and get to know her. I mean, Sebastian, you got to do The Blue Flower. You got to do one of my favorite musicals of all time. You got to produce Last Day of August, one of my a movies that I saw at the Big Apple Festival. Before. Oh, how sweet of you! Yeah. And I get to work on Sunday with 
the greatest actress I know. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, right. So my final question for both of you is what have you learned about yourself during this pandemic? It's a big question. Mm. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pa, 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 pa. Um, without getting too deep, yeah. I am uh, so used to having in being surrounded by inspiration and people who inspire me and music that inspires me that I do have to work very hard to get that inspiration on the daily when I'm not surrounded by it, when I'm not going to a rehearsal studio or a recording studio or one of our glorious, you know, brick and mortar theaters. If I'm just in my house, um, it's been a tough thing to look at myself in the mirror and say, it's time. you got to do this for you. You can't expect a theater or a collaboration with an artist or a place to do that for you. Somehow you have to find it in yourself. And it has been really difficult without breaking into tears. Yeah. It's been really hard to know that about myself and to come to terms with that and to kind of try to shift gears and say, we got to dig deep because that is what makes you a better, happier person, but it's up to you to find it within yourself, not constantly be fed it, which is what we all were so lucky yeah. to have, like these beautiful seven course meals if you're working and living in the Broadway community. And with that gone, I realized, wow, I wasn't feeding myself. I was yeah. always allowing it to be fed to me. And now it's time to feed myself. Beautiful, Sebastian for you. I mean, that's tough to follow. Uh, I, as a as someone who considers himself to be fairly sensitive, uh, I have come to terms with the fact that maybe I'm a little resistant to change, and maybe I'm not as flexible as I thought I was, and that's been a real discovery. Uh, sort of, I think of myself as having a pretty gooey heart, and I think I've needed a little bit of a softening. Yeah, uh, in, in in and I also discovered that after forty four years, it's all right to go to therapy. Oh <laughs> yes. So that's been great. You know, I mean, it's 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 been a a real year, and thank God I have Steph. Yeah. I still God can't cook, so maybe that's something We're you cooking. can help me with. Yeah. Yeah, but Blue Apron, baby, we, that yeah. stuff is nobody great. else needs to eat our food. We're feeding ourselves, but Richie, yep. I could use you in that. Room. <laughs> Uh, I just go online. I just go online and find these recipes and I'm like, oh, this came out really good. Oh. Like I said, the two of you have each other. You have your gorgeous daughter. Like I said, I think when everybody comes out of this at the end, it's going to be so different and everyone's going to be so open and your life is going to be so different the way you look at everything. That's right. That's right. Like I said, I adore the two of you. I want to tell everybody once again, they're going to be live this Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with a repeat this Sunday night at 8 p.m. There may be a sound check, but like I said, the, the roosters will be crowing. We have no idea. The turkeys may be out in the backyard. We don't know what's going to happen. We're all going to be there for that. Tickets are available at Broadway World Events or just Google them or Seth Concerts. Um, the tickets are $28.50. There's also a very special student code now at Broadway World, but you must have an email with a .edu when you sign up at Broadway World with a student um, email to set up for a student account at Broadway World. You get a really nice discount for these concerts for all the kids that are in school and everything else. Right. Seth Concert Series is produced by Mark Cortali. It's sponsored by Broadway World and StreamYard. I'm going to be there at 3 o'clock on Sunday. I hope everybody else is too, wherever you are around the world. I adore the two of you. You know that. Thank you. We're very you grateful. Too. Be safe, oh, buddy. You, you look great. Take Thanks. care, everybody. What's Bye. that? You haven't aged a day. It's all an illusion. It's all. <laughs> it's moisturizer and a key light. It's a nice like shaped head. That's what it is. <laughs> Whatever. Don't look at my white hands. Thank you all very much. I love you guys. Love Stay you safe, too. everybody. See you soon. Bye, Bye. guys.